Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In this video we will be going through the process of customising my Nerf Firestrike Blaster. So this is the first time I've ever done this before and I decided to kind of make this video as a how-to and a reference for myself to come back to when I start doing more of these videos. So I chose the Fire Strike because it's been laying around for quite a while and it's also a springer so that means it should be relatively easy to take apart and such. So step one is to take it apart. So as you can see on the left side of the shell it's empty and then on the right side I have all the internals there. So as you can see all the parts are laid out and I won't be doing any internal mods or anything like that. I'll simply be putting it back together once I'm done. So an important step to remember is to take pictures of all the internals as this provides a good reference for when you put the blaster back together after modifying it. So here we have the empty shells and then I also decided to put all the parts in a box so you know where they all are. So I found some of the most coarse sandpaper I could and what I did is sanded off the pistol grip, removed the Nerf logo and then sanded down any text on the panel. So I think the design of it is very smooth now. And then on the other side of the shell it's the same story. So the pistol grip has been completely sanded down which looks very smooth and will look good after painting. Same with the Nerf logo and then on the panel any warning signs or labels have been removed off. I did decide to keep the parts that stick out under the laser pointers. I think those look really good. So after washing both sides of the shells, I then got some Citadel Chaos Black which is a type of model spray paint and I've heard it's very high quality which is why I decided to use this. It's also my first time using it as well. I then got my safety face mask for spraying and I'll definitely recommend this if you want to keep out breathing any toxic fumes in. So after spraying both sides of the shell these are how they both turned out and I think they've ended up really well. The quality of the paint is really good and there was no drip or anything like that. So here's a closer look at the blaster after painting it completely black and as I've said I'm really happy of how this has turned out. The matte look is really good. So here's some Citadel Cantor base paint and this is blue which we'll be using for the secondary colour of this blaster. The third colour is this Tamiya flat white acrylic paint and this will be used for the detailing. So here's the blaster shells after the hand painting with the base paint and then using a paintbrush as well to fill out some of the details. So I'm really happy of how this has turned out. The detailing looks great and I think it's a very good mix of both black and blue and then the white kind of makes the colours pop out a bit more which is great to see. So I'm very glad to have chosen a secondary colour instead of just doing it completely black. So the next step of the process in customising the fire stripe was to make it look battle worn and I used this rub and buff which is a pewter colour ordered from Amazon and what you want to make sure you do is get a very small amount onto cardboard and use a cloth or something like that to rub into it before you apply it to the blaster as too much will completely cover the surface area you want to apply it to. So I chose the areas of the gun where I'd made some small mistakes and any parts that the user would touch such as a grip. So next we have some Citadel varnish spray and I'll be using this to keep the paint job protected from any cracks or chips. So after applying this, the colours stay exactly the same. It has no effect 
on the paint job. It's much like applying a clear coat to a model. So I applied this to both sides and it's the same concept as when using the spray paint. Do it outside with a mask on to make sure you don't breathe it in. So here's just some close up clips of the blaster. And as I've said before, I'm really happy of how this has turned out. The use of black and blue look really good with the white. And then the rub and buff really makes it look well battle worn. Like a prop out of a sci-fi or dystopian film or something like that. So for a first paint job, I'd definitely say this is a job well done. So now we'll be putting it back together. I kept all the parts in the box. And it did take about half an hour to completely do it using the pictures I took earlier as reference. But I'm really happy that I did manage to keep it all functioning and such. And I still think the orange works well with the overall design of the blaster. I decided not to paint any of the working parts. Here's the other side of the blaster, which has turned out really well also. And I tried to keep the use of the Robin Buff as parallel as possible when using it to make sure that both sides went well together, which they do. The top rail has also got some Robin Buff and I tried to make it look as worn as possible as if the user would have some attachment on it. The laser pointer also works as well, which I'm very happy about. And I managed to keep the firing function in the blaster as well which was one of the aspects along with the laser pointer that I wanted to keep in with the original blaster. So here are some before and after comparison pictures of before spraying it and after the paint job just to give you a real idea of the changes I've made to this blaster. So I'm going to end the video on these pictures I would just like to say thank you for watching, I hope you did enjoy this video and the work I put into this blaster. I will be doing some more videos of these soon so watch out for those and please make sure you do subscribe if you enjoyed it.